Hey, High View. I'm excited to dig into God's Word again with you just as a point of connection uh, during this unique season of life. We're again going to look at Hebrews 12. I, I know that we've been in it the last two weeks, but there is just so much in this chapter, especially at the end things that the author reveals that really just uh, go off like a stick of dynamite. And I want us to have more time to really see all the beauty of Jesus that is being revealed. In the last two verses of the chapter, first it's revealed to us that Jesus' kingdom will not be shaken eternally. His uh, purposes will not be thwarted. And then there comes a command that we are to offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. I just love that phrase. It clearly has reference to the power of God, but it's actually even deeper in its meaning than that. And shocker here, it has reference to the Old Testament. And I want to point you uh, today to a passage in the Old Testament that I think helps us really glean what is being revealed by this phrase, consuming fire, when speaking of the Lord. And it's in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. It reads this way, Take care lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make a carved image, the form of anything that the Lord your God has forbidden you. Just like Hebrews 12, we are being urged to a singular devotion, an undivided attention upon the Lord because of the covenant that we are in with Him. And then it gives the same grounding as Hebrews 12. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire. But then it adds another qualifying statement. He is a jealous God. I truly believe that this element of the nature of God, that he is jealous, is one of the most misunderstood doctrines of all of Scripture. But it is so clear. In Exodus 34, it says, The Lord your God, his name is Jealous. There is a famous TV talk show host who credits her walking away from Christianity because of this doctrine in particular. She recounts a time where she heard a preacher talking about uh, the nature of God is jealous. And she just become very, became very confused and asked, how could the creator of the universe ever be jealous of me or envy any of his creation? He must just not be that powerful. This obviously is a gross misunderstanding of the jealousy of God because God's jealousy is not something that is uh, sinful in its disposition. It's not one of envy. It's actually one of great holiness and righteousness that concerns his glory. Devin and I hadn't been married about a year when this guy that we knew from college began to try and message her on Facebook. And it was obvious we were married. I mean, her name is changed and everything, but he's messaging her and she comes home one day from work and shows me these messages. And I begin to read these words from this other man, I guess trying to woo my wife away from me. And my heart, began to pound in my chest. My blood pressure began uh, to, to raise and my face turned red and flush with anger. And I was thinking, who do you think that you are trying to take my wife, trying to woo my wife away from me? Do you not know that we have made promises with one another? We are in a covenant relationship together. I belong to her. She belongs to me. She has taken on my name. Was my attitude and were my thoughts sinful? No, I, I don't believe so. Matter of fact, I believe if I didn't feel that way, then I must not be that devoted in my love for her and in the covenant that we are in. Hi, View. I want to remind you of the covenant that you are in with King Jesus. Jesus has died on the cross to pay for the penalty of your sin, and he has been raised up from the dead. And if you have trusted in him and believed in him for salvation, you have entered into a covenant with him. You have entered into promises with him. You have taken on his name. And it is for this reason that his passion and his jealousy burns for your affections, burns for your worship, because it is the rightful way of the covenant. 
It is for this reason in Hebrews 12 that he will allow you to endure struggle and he will discipline you because he will ensure that this relationship lasts eternally. God ultimately is jealous for you because he is jealous for his glory. This is not because he is egocentric or prideful. It would actually be unrighteous for God to be unconcerned for his glory. And it would not be for our best good and creation's best good if his greatest praise and greatest glory weren't viewed as the end of all of life and the purpose of all of life. And if this God has placed his spirit within you, which James says yearns jealously for his glory, then also we too must be jealous for his praise. Do you take it personally when you hear someone mock the name of Jesus? Are you burdened with great passion and jealousy and zeal when you know of someone who does not have a relationship with Jesus, who is cut off and separated from his love? I believe that those who are most jealous for the Lord Jesus and his glory are those who are most devoted to his mission and his name being proclaimed. But yet while his jealousy is perfect toward us, our jealousy is something that must grow in him over time. And it doesn't just grow by us approaching this consuming fire for a moment and then walking away and leaving our thoughts from him at the door. It requires us to come into the presence of this consuming fire and stay there, to remain in his word, being saturated in his word day to day, morning by morning, night by night, devoting ourselves to prayer, to continually thinking about him until we become like Jeremiah, who said, your word is like a fire in my bones and I'm weary from holding it in. I cannot, I must speak. And out of the overflow of what God has consumed, we speak. Have you, are you being consumed by this consuming fire? Are you allowing him to grow his jealousy for his glory? I wanna encourage you to pursue him with your whole heart, with undivided attention. Thank you.